A memory leak happens when we allocate space and never free it. Clearly, we need strategies for how to prevent that. If we have memory leaks, over time, memory fills up with stuff that we aren't using anymore. The system will slow down and eventually crash. There are tools called profilers where you can watch to see if this is happening. It's pretty easy to spot because the memory and use graph trends up. Valgrind and its ecosystem of tools are great for analyzing this. I should make a video about that. Here's an example of why it can be hard to spot memory leaks. In this code, read a record is allocating space for a weather reading struct, setting its values by reading and parsing a line in a file, and then returning a pointer to the space it allocated. Process file is processing an entire file by looping calls to read a record until it hits the end of file. This leaks because the space we are allocated never freed. Process file should free it after it finishes using it. If this was processing a large file, this could be a large problem. The reason that it's hard to spot this memory leak is that the allocate and the place that needs to do the free are far apart. One way to prevent memory leaks like that one is to follow the adage, the function that allocates it, frees it. That means that the call that does the allocation should be the same function where we do the free. In this example, that means that process file should allocate the space, then pass that space to read a record to get the data. When it's finished processing it, it should free the space. Since the calc and free are in the same function, it's easier to check that we actually did the necessary free. No memory leak. For completeness, we should look at how this changed read a record. Basically, instead of allocating the space and returning that pointer, it has an input output parameter that is where the data that it is reading should go. The nice thing about this is that it frees up the return value. Now we can return a Boolean, which gives us the opportunity to do some error checking on the data we're reading. Bonus! Another source of memory leaks is complicated data structures. Suppose we have a struct that includes a pointer to another struct. In this case, I've made a daily weather reading struct that contains a date and a pointer to a weather reading for that day. We've talked about how we should have a function to allocate and initialize a struct. In this case, it contains two calics, one for daily weather reading struct and one for the struct that contains that day's data. When that's finished, what we've allocated looks like this. We are returning a pointer to a struct that has a month, day, and year, and a pointer to another struct that contains our two weather readings. Suppose we pay attention to the function that allocates it frees it, and our function allocates it, does some stuff with it, and then frees it. Oh no, memory leak! When we free stuff, that block gets freed, but the block containing the two readings does not get freed. Even worse, we no longer have a pointer that points at it, so there is no way that we can find it and free it. Definite memory leak. To prevent this kind of leak, every time you build a function that allocates something, you should make a parallel function that frees it. The freeze of the blocks should be done in the reverse order as the allocation. In this case, we allocated the daily struct and then allocated the struct it points at. That means we should free the block it points at and then free the daily block. With this, if we use these functions for all allocations and freeze, and we pay attention to the function that allocates it frees it, we won't have memory leaks. I love topics like this. There's a lot of subtlety in the difference between code that works and good code. Do you know other techniques for preventing memory leaks? If so, leave them in the comments so that we can all keep learning.